Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is about a formula for the nth prime number. This formula may be utterly useless, but I think that it looks cute and is worthy of investigation. The function y of m gives the number of primes less than or equal to m. y of 1 is equal to 0, y of 2 is equal to 1, 1 is not prime, but 2 is prime, y of 3 is equal to 2, among the numbers 1, 2, 3, 2 and 3 are prime. Y of 4 is equal to 2 because 4 is not prime. Y of 5 is equal to 3. Among the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have the primes 2, 3 and 5. Y of 15 is equal to 6. Among the positive integers from 1 to 15, we have these six prime numbers. If we want to design a formula for the nth prime, we can use the following construction. 1 plus summation m from 1 to infinity. Then we have the indicator function and the condition that we have inside is pi of m is less than n. The indicator function is binary. It is two value. It's either 0 or 1. 0 if this condition is false, 1 if the condition is true. The claim is that if we do this summation, add 1, we will get the nth prime. The summation index m starts at 1. Pi of 1 is equal to 0, and it will definitely be less than the positive integer n. m is equal to 2, then 3, and so on. Pi of pn, the number of primes less than or equal to pn, this is equal to n. Once we reach the nth prime, then among the integers from 1 to pn, we have n primes. Pi of m, where m is strictly less than pn, this is strictly less than n, because we haven't yet reached the nth prime. So this is the idea of this summation. The indicator function is 1, so long as small m is equal to 1 or 2 or 3, all the way to pn minus 1. When m is equal to pn, then the number of primes becomes n. The condition in the indicator is false. The indicator is 0. And after that, it remains 0. This summation is exactly equal to the nth prime minus 1. Let's see this through an example. Suppose that we are interested in the eighth prime. So n is equal to 8. m takes the positive integer values. This is the corresponding pi of m. And this is the indicator. And the condition here is pi of m is strictly less than 8. Pi of 1 is 0, and 0 is less than 8. This condition is true. The indicator is equal to 1. Then m is equal to 2. Pi of 2 is equal to 1. 1 is strictly less than 8. The indicator is 1. Then m is equal to 3. Pi of m is equal to 2. 2 is strictly less than 8. The indicator is equal to 1. This will continue. Here we have reached the seventh prime, which is 17. Pi of 17 is equal to 7. 7 is strictly less than 8. The indicator is still equal to 1. 18 is not a prime number. Pi of 18 is equal to pi of 17. Pi of 18 is equal to 7. The indicator is still equal to 1. Now m is equal to 19. And that's the eighth prime number. The function pi of m will tell us when m is 19 that pi of 19 is equal to 8. 8 strictly less than 8, that's false. The indicator is 0 and it will remain 0 for eternity. The indicator gave us a number of ones corresponding to the number of positive integers between 1 and the prime number of interest minus 1. When we do this summation, in this example we get 18. Then we add 1 and get the eighth prime. Do we have to employ an infinite sum? Note that we need to sum all the way to the nth prime minus 1. It's okay to extend this summation to an upper limit that is strictly greater than pn, but that is still a finite number. For instance, we can sum all the way to 2 to the power n. 2 to the power 1 is 2. The first prime is 2. The second prime is 3, which is less than or equal to 2 to the power 2. The third prime is 5, which is less than or equal to 2 to the power 3, which is 8. Generally, pn is less than or equal to 2 to the power n, and this can be established via induction. Here is the base case, and if we assume that this is true for n, the question now becomes, is it true for n plus 1? Suppose that pn is indeed less than or equal to 2 to the power n. Is pn plus 1 less than or equal to 2 to the power n plus 1? The answer is yes, using Bertrand's postulate, which can be stated in this way, pn plus 1, is strictly less than 2 pn. Since pn is assumed to be less than or equal to 2 to the power n, we are done. pn plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 to the n plus 1. We can modify our formula for pn so that the summation here is a finite sum. The positive integer m is in the range from 1 to 2 to the power n. Can we express the prime pi function and the indicator function in a nice way? 
in terms of functions that are widely used in mathematics. For the indicator function with the condition alpha less than n, what we can do is to divide n by alpha plus 1, then take the nth root, then take the floor. Why is this true? Recall that this indicator is 1 if the condition is true, so alpha is strictly less than n, 0 if alpha is greater than or equal to n. So we need to show that this floor is either 0 or 1, depending on whether alpha is strictly less than n or not. If alpha is less than or equal to n minus 1, then alpha plus 1 is less than or equal to n. Then n divided by alpha plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. We can raise both sides to the power 1 over n. The nth root of n over alpha plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. If we take the floor of this quantity, we get something that is greater than or equal to 1. But if we have equality here, we need to show that this floor is exactly equal to 1 when alpha is less than or equal to n minus 1. To prove this, note that n over alpha plus 1 is less than or equal to n. Raise both sides to the power 1 over n. So this quantity here is upper bounded by the nth root of n. If n is 1, this is 1. And if n is strictly greater than 1, then this quantity is strictly between 1 and 2. We can show this by defining the function g of x, x greater than 1. g of x is equal to x to the power 1 over x, or e to the power ln x over x. If x is greater than 1, ln x is strictly positive. The power here is strictly positive, and so g of x is strictly greater than 1. The derivative of g of x is the exponential, and then by the chain rule, we need to differentiate ln x divided by x. This gives us x squared in the denominator. And then in the numerator, we have 1 over x times x, that's 1, minus ln x. As we can see, that if x is greater than e, then the derivative is negative, and the function is strictly decreasing. When x is equal to 2, we have the square root 2, which is strictly between 1 and 2. And if x is equal to 3, we have the cubic root of 3, which is also strictly less than 2. The function is strictly decreasing. This means that for every n that is greater than or equal to 2, n to the power 1 over n is strictly between 1 and 2. This quantity is greater than or equal to 1. The nth root of n is an upper bound on this quantity. So the floor of this quantity is equal to 1 whenever alpha is strictly less than n. If alpha is greater than or equal to n, this positive fraction is strictly less than 1. The nth root is strictly less than 1. So the floor is equal to 0 as desired. So what is our formula now? The nth prime number is 1 plus summation m from 1 to 2 to the power n. Rather than using the indicator, we will have the floor of the nth root of n divided by by of m plus 1. What about by of n? If beta is an integer, cosine by beta squared is equal to 1 because cosine by beta is minus 1 to the power beta. If beta is not an integer, then the magnitude of cosine by beta is strictly less than 1. And cosine by beta squared is strictly less than 1. Thus, if beta is an integer, the floor of cosine squared by beta is 1. Otherwise, it is 0. Wilson's theorem states that for every positive integer n greater than or equal to 2, n is prime if and only if 1 plus the factorial of n minus 1 is divisible by n. So we can combine these two ideas by computing the floor of the square of the cosine of pi times k minus 1 factorial plus 1 divided by k and then some k from 1 to m. This floor is 0 or 1. The floor is equal to 1 if this is an integer. And this is an integer if k minus 1 factorial plus 1 is divisible by k. For positive integers greater than or equal to 2, this is the case if and only if k is a prime. And this is also an integer if k is equal to 1. So the number of 1s in this summation is 1 plus the number of primes less than or equal to m. In other words, this summation is pi of m plus 1. We can take this pi of m plus 1 and replace it by summation k from 1 to m, the floor of cosine squared by 1 plus k minus 1 factorial divided by k.